John had been searching for his dog for weeks. The animal had disappeared without a trace, and John had been devastated ever since. He had put up posters all over town, called animal shelters, and even put an ad in the local newspaper. But nothing had come of it. Now, nearly all of them had given up hope and John was on his own. But luckily, he was a very determined man. Before we start, smash the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any new stories. Charlie was the first thing John thought about when he woke up, and the last thing on his mind before he fell asleep. A few weeks after Charlie's disappearance, rumors had started spreading around town about what could have happened to him. One person said that they had seen the dog get hit by a truck, while others claimed that it had simply run away, wanting to go back to its roots and hunt in the forest. And the next day, it happened. He was taking a walk in the forest. It was the first time in weeks that he had just gone outside to clear his mind and not look for Charlie, which made it even more surreal. He was so lost in thoughts about something else that he didn't even notice him at first. But when he finally laid eyes on him, his face immediately lit up. Charlie, is that really you? He exclaimed, and the dog came running toward him and started jumping around, barking with happiness. There was no doubt about it. Charlie and his human friend were finally reunited. John hugged him with teary eyes and asked, Where have you been, buddy? I've been looking all over for you. Of course, Charlie himself would not be able to answer this question, but then John noticed something he had missed at first. There was something attached to Charlie's collar. A letter. What? Who put that there? He thought, and he quickly took it in his hands, opened the envelope, and started reading. Very quickly, he realized what was going on. This letter explains everything about Charlie's disappearance. This is not right. She will pay for this. He carefully grabbed the dog's left paw and counted the toes. He turned pale when he counted four of them. John realized that what was written in the letter was true. This dog was not the real Charlie. He looked exactly like him, but it wasn't him. You see, Charlie was born with only three toes, not four. Oh no, Charlie, where are you? John exclaimed, and he was starting to panic now. He took the dog by its collar and hurried home. This had gotten really complicated and he had plenty of work to do. He needed to make a few calls and then he had to figure out what was the best way to handle this situation. Clutching his phone, John dialed Frank's number. His voice was unsteady as he explained the bizarre situation. Frank, I found a dog that looks exactly like Charlie, but it's not him. There's this cryptic letter. He paused, struggling to find the right words. Frank. A longtime friend and confidant listened intently. John's story was unusual, but Frank's trust in his friend was unwavering. He knew this was serious. Frank's voice was firm and reassuring. We'll figure this out, John. Let's meet and plan our next move. John looked at the dog, still wagging its tail innocently. He couldn't just leave it. The dog was a living clue to Charlie's whereabouts. I'll take care of you for now, he murmured. The dog tilted its head as if understanding. John decided to name him Shadow for his uncanny resemblance to Charlie. John's journey began at Charlie's favorite park, the place where they had spent countless hours playing fetch. He examined every inch, hoping for a clue, a sign, anything. As John returned home, a neighbor approached him. I saw a woman near your house around the time Charlie disappeared, she said hesitantly. She looked a bit like your ex-wife, Sandra. John's heart skipped a beat. Could it be a coincidence? He thanked the neighbor, his mind racing with questions. This new information was a potential lead, one that he couldn't ignore. Alone in his study, John laid out all the information he had gathered. The neighbor's tip, the mysterious letter, and the look-alike dog named Shadow. Slowly, a pattern seemed to emerge, pointing subtly towards Sandra. But why? What would be her motive? John feeling a mix of apprehension and urgency, dialed Sandra's number, only to be greeted by an automated message stating the number was no longer in service. His heart sank. Undeterred, John tapped into his memories of Sandra, sifting through details that might lead him to her current whereabouts. He recalled her friends, her favorite haunts, and her habits. Slowly, he compiled a list of places she might go and people she might stay in touch with. John's efforts paid off when a mutual acquaintance mentioned Sandra had moved to a nearby town. This information reignited a spark of hope in him. Armed with this new lead, he prepared to venture into the unfamiliar territory. In Sandra's new town, 
John's search intensified. He combed through the streets, questioning locals and visiting places she might frequent. As John rounded a corner, his heart stopped. There, just a few feet away, was Sandra. Their eyes met and a myriad of emotions passed between them. Then, in a split second, Sandra turned and fled. Determined, John followed Sandra, keeping a cautious distance. He watched as she entered a modest house at the end of a quiet street. One afternoon, as John watched Sandra's house from a distance, he noticed something through the window. Squinting to see better, John realized what it was. It was Charlie's favorite toy, a small red ball they had bought together. Seeing it there, in Sandra's house, reignited a surge of hope and suspicion. Armed with new determination, John returned to Sandra's doorstep. When she opened the door, he didn't hesitate. Why do you have Charlie's toy? He demanded, his voice a mix of accusation and desperation. Sandra's face registered shock, her eyes darting to the mantle involuntarily. I... I don't know what you're talking about, she stammered, but her reaction had already betrayed her. John knew he had struck a nerve. In the heat of the moment, years of unspoken grievances and hurt feelings surfaced. You never understood, John, Sandra said, her voice breaking. It was always about you and Charlie. What about us? John was taken aback. This wasn't just about Charlie anymore. It was about their failed marriage, the love they had lost, and the pain they both carried. As the confrontation reached its climax, Sandra's demeanor shifted. She looked defeated, her eyes welling up with tears. I didn't mean for any of this to happen, she whispered. It was a moment of vulnerability that John had not seen in her for a long time. With tears streaming down her face, Sandra's resolve crumbled. I took Charlie, she confessed, her voice barely above a whisper. The admission hit John like a tidal wave, leaving him reeling with a mixture of relief and betrayal. Sandra's confession poured out amidst sobs of regret. I missed him, John. I missed our life. And Charlie was the only part of that I could reach. Her words were laden with sorrow and remorse. John listened, a storm of emotions raging inside him. He felt anger, but also a deep, unexpected sadness. Sandra's actions, misguided as they were, stemmed from a place of loss and longing. The letter, John asked, his voice strained. Why did you leave it? Sandra wiped her tears, struggling to compose herself. I wanted to hurt you to make you feel the loss I felt. She admitted to writing the letter, each word crafted to twist the knife of betrayal deeper. John felt a chill as he realized the depth of Sandra's despair and the length she had gone to in her pain. As the reality of Sandra's deception sank in, John felt a profound sense of betrayal. He had been chasing shadows haunted by the loss of Charlie while Sandra concealed the truth. The weight of her deceit was heavy, casting a dark shadow over their shared history. He looked at Sandra, seeing her not just as his ex-wife but as someone who had deeply wounded him in her own pain. With the location of Sandra's family property in hand, John set off immediately. As John neared the property, his emotions swirled in a tumultuous mix. There amidst the trees was Charlie. The moment their eyes met, time seemed to stand still. Charlie! John called out, his voice cracking with emotion. The dog's ears perked up and he ran towards John, tail wagging furiously. Their reunion was a burst of joy and relief, years of love encapsulated in a single overwhelming moment. Back home, John watched as Charlie and Cooper, the look-alike, played together. It was a sight that brought a smile to his face. The two dogs, so different yet so alike, symbolized a new chapter in John's life, a chapter of acceptance, resilience, and newfound companionship. As for Sandra, she faced the consequences of her actions, but John chose to focus on the future, a future filled with hope, healing, and the unconditional love of his two loyal friends.